Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, this week's sewing class will be a different one than I normally do. I'm normally always fashion related. But now um, I promised my son that I would do a makeover of his balcony. It's a very small balcony, it's very boring, there's nothing on it. So we decided to put a bench on it with some pillows and a rug on the floor. And uh, so I wanted to make outdoor pillows because uh, we live in a very wet country that's raining a lot. Uh, so we cannot put normal pillows outside because then we have to take it in and put it out. And, and because uh, of my health issues I am only awake 6 hours a day so I cannot make a video of fashion and also make the pillows for my son. So I thought well I'll make just the video about the pillows and if you don't like it please click away. And I'll see you again next week, then there will be a fashion video again. But now I thought, well, maybe someone is inter interested in making outdoor pillows because they will be water resistant, waterproof, I hope. Uh, and uh, I bought some special fabric for that. It is fabric that is um, suitable or made for uh, cushions on a boat. So they, are, they told me they are really water resistant or uh, waterproof. So the cushion inside will not get wet and it feels um, different than a normal fabric. It is more, I, I cannot explain, but maybe you can hear it, it's water, more plasticky, but I, I don't know. But just ask for a waterproof fabric and my son really likes this color. I think you call it teal, we call it turquoise. And um, we're going to make uh, pillows out of this on the cover of the pillows that should really be waterproof. So I make the um, zippers differently so that they cannot get water in so that you can really leave them outside even when you live in a wet country as we do. Uh, so if you like that please stay, keep on watching and uh, see what we're gonna make out of it. And if you haven't already please subscribe. Um, as I said they are, these are not the normal videos but sometimes I'll skip to another uh, po project that is sewing related but not about fashion. So. If you like that, please subscribe and now I'll show you how to make these pillows. So what you first do is you measure how wide your inner pillow is. And it's funny because it is cheaper to buy a whole inner pillow than just um, buying the uh, stuffing. So I just bought, uh, I think from Ikea or some store like that, just bought some uh, pillows. To put inside and they don't have to be waterproof or whatever because they get um, uh, covered by the um, pillowcase. So what you do is you measure how wide your uh, pillow is and we're going to fold it over from one side so uh, the length of your fabric will be the double part. So you can put the whole uh, measuring tape all around and then measure how much it is or just double the width by two. So mine is um, 50 centimeters wide and 100 centimeters doubled up. And what we're going to do is where the zipper is, we're going to make a sort of a fly. So that means the seam is not just touching like there and there's the zipper because then uh, water can very easily get inside because the zipper is almost exposed. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, flip one part of the seam over the other so the uh, zipper is covered and that means that we make um, the seam a bit different we uh, add to one side of the seam four centimeter seam allowance and on the other side two centimeter seam allowance and that means that at the two centimeter side we can put the um, zipper a bit more inside the seam and on the four centimeter side you fold all in four centimeters so you can sew about three centimeters inside the pillow to attach your zipper and I'll show you where we do that how you do that but it's very easy and it makes sure that your zipper is uh, covered by your pillowcase and it is sewn down so it cannot open up or whatever so it's the best way to make it more waterproof uh, then what you do is you map out on the back side of your um, fabric what size you need for your pillowcase and what I also did because I make several pillows uh, I mapped down all my fabrics. I have a blue one and I also have a white one. How I can best uh, measure out my pillowcases that I get the most out of it. So I measured down here 100 centimeters plus 4 plus 2. So 106. And in the width 50 centimeters 
plus two times one cent with the seam allowance for the sides. So I'm gonna cut that out and then I'll show you how we gonna attach uh, the zipper to it. So I cut out my pillowcase and um, of the remainders I cut two uh, pieces of strip for the ties and first I cut them wider so that I could make a kind of um, bias tape from it by folding it double but then I saw that it was way too, um, uh, sh uh, too uh, stiff to use it as a tie so now I just cut it 2 cm wide, 50 cm long and then it is more flowy and it is white from the back and blue from the right but that's not a problem because I make white and blue pillows so it will still be matching and now it is easier to tie so just make it one piece one layer uh, ties and what you do is first you match up your uh, seam that should be here so we have here two centimeters uh, left because this one has more seam allowance and I just clip the sides down so that they stay together. You don't need pins here because this won't fray or won't slide off or whatever. Um, I put the ties for the uh, pillow for the seat. I will put them here in between uh, so that I can tie it from the back uh, onto the railing. But for the pillows uh, that I use for uh, the, the back part of the um, bench, I will put the strings here on top of the case, so putting it inside and then in between here the side seam so that when you uh, take it up and you can uh, tie it to your railing the zipper will be on the bottom so there won't be rain falling down and they will not get to the zipper uh, unless when you put the zipper up it will be raining on. So. Uh, depending on for what pillow the pillowcase will be, I will put my ties uh, on the top uh, at the side seam or on the bottom here next to where the zipper will be. And this one will be for the, the back uh, pillow, so I will put them here in between later on. So then you take your zipper. Mine is uh, as long as the, or as wide as the pillowcase will be, so I will make it a little bit short. I will just cut it off. Um, and um, just see how wide your zipper is, how much of your seam here you already can make. So I will make mine 4 centimeters, and then put my zipper in between. If you have a smaller zipper then you make longer uh, seam here uh, by sewing it down. So do that first, don't do the side seams yet, just do here the side seams where your zipper will end. So mine will be something like this, this part. Oh, and someone told me once that when you want to sew something waterproof you should use a cotton thread because cotton absorbs water and then it expands and then it should would um, seal up the uh, sewing uh, th uh, holes. Um, but I asked now uh, several fabric specialists if that was true or if you should do that. And they all said, well, I would just use a normal polyester thread because that is way more uh, strong. It doesn't break that easily. And um, they thought it, that would be more important than um, the expansion of the cotton thread that would seal the holes. Because they said, well, it, it's not obvious that it will really make it more waterproof than when you just use a uh, polyester uh, thread. on our zipper and we start first with the smallest seam allowance so where you have the seam allowance of two centimeters and what you do is you clip your um, zipper just uh, matching the seam here so that it is a little bit more outside from where your seam is so your seam is two centimeters from um, the edge and now your zipper will be around one centimeter from the edge when you sew here down here uh, along the zipper line. So that means when you fold your zipper over later on, your zipper will uh, f uh, fall within your seam because your seam when you have when you would sew this down would be here, and this will be inside your pillowcase. So um, that means that the zipper is not on the outside, and also when you don't top stitch it the uh, stitching here will be not uh, 
from uh, on the outside so rain will, can never go in because it is not on the outside because you flip your zipper over and your stitching is you, you see now your stitching won't be visible here so there won't be holes on the outside so if you can don't top stitch it just stitch it here onto your seam allowance I will cut this part off because here my seam is ending so this part of the zipper I will cut when I've sewn this on so give this a normal straight stitch uh, don't backstitch because then you get too many holes, just knot your ends by hand. Then when you put it right side out, you should have something like this. Um, when you put your uh, seams open, so this one to that one, that one to that one, then you get this and you can finger press here the seam where your zipper is. You can also press it uh, with your iron when you put a cotton cloth uh, on top of it, then you can certainly press this uh, with an iron. And you can also just press this whole seam here and when we're gonna sew this, it's easier to do this with an iron, but you see now already that the um, zipper is just covered by the fabric here that we're going to attach to the other side of the zipper. But first we're going to sew the side seams, so flip them back wrong side out. I will attach my strings now because I'm making this for my back pillow. So I will put them in between the side seam and then make sure that you align it right. So here are your seams on top, you put your strings in between and I will put them just on the corners here on both sides and then you're gonna sew both the side seams. Make sure you open up your zipper first otherwise you cannot uh, put your uh, pillowcase right side out later on. So make sure you open it up before you start sewing the side seams. Now you flip it right side out and then you pin um, the seam flat on the side where you already attached the zipper and if you have um, pressed that down before you did the side seam then it's very easy to do and I like to use clips to keep that in place and I also did that for the um, other seam allowance I, cl I clipped it down so that I'm sure that this is right so it's um, uh, matching here on this side and now what you do is you can measure for a certain certainty how uh, far from the edge you should uh, attach your zipper. So to me it is two centimeters and that's exactly right. So what I do is I make a mark here where I should do my stitching because it is very difficult because you cannot open it up. You have to now through the opening uh, you have to sew that down. And um, now it is not possible to have no stitching here on top if you don't make the um, case without a seam here. You can also open it up and just attach it from the inside and then you don't have any stitching here on the outside. You can do that too, but I don't really care to do this. I rather have not a seam here uh, and just have here the attachment seam. I don't really care, but if you don't want this too, if you don't want any stitching on the outside, then just don't uh, make the fold here, just make a seam here on the end. So I'm gonna mark where I need to uh, do my stitching. So I mark it on two centimeters. And um, then I like now to uh, put pins in, because then I'm sure that my um, zipper won't be shifting when I am sewing because as I said it's a rather um, difficult angle to uh, sew within the um, pillowcase. 
so now I like to just open up my zipper and put a pin in here through the uh, zipper band that is here and then sew your um, zipper closed and then here at the end where your seam starts make a diagonal ending so that it is secured and it doesn't open up because you cannot really top stitch it so, and also make sure that you poke your corners out very well because that looks nicer when your pillow is in so we're gonna do that and then your pillowcase is finished Then when you're done, it looks something like this, so I hope you can see it. Zippo is here underneath, so nicely covered by, let's call it the fly. You still see my chalk here a little bit, but when I rub that away, then you don't see it anymore. And you have nice stitching here with the diagonal stitching. So now for the other method, what you also can do if you don't want that stitching here for let's call it the fly uh, above the zipper but you want to have a seam here on this side where we now have the fold so we don't have a seam here on the bottom of the uh, cushion or the top whatever you like to call it um, then you can do it like this and what you do is you don't take just one piece of fabric but you take two and one is with seam allowance one centimeter all around but at the zipper the two centimeter seam allowance and the other is one centimeter around but at the zipper the four centimeters seam allowance and of course you need two strands for the ties and um, then what we do we do we start exactly the same as we did with the blue one we're gonna put them right sides together take your zipper and measure how wide your zipper is and so here the side parts and um, determine whether you want your uh, ties to be here on the zipper side or on the side here uh, on top because if you want them here now you have to uh, insert them in between the seam so again align your zipper up to the right side of the two centimeter seam allowance side and uh, line them with the edge of your uh, fabric so that you have your zipper a little bit inside the seam allowance so now again make sure that you iron it nicely down that you have a really nice squeeze here at the bottom where the uh, one part of the zipper already is attached and here on the top part the fly as we call it now um, and I noticed that uh, you can uh, this kind of fabric I don't know what you will have with this kind of fabric I could uh, just iron it without my uh, cloth in between so that makes it easier to press it down because otherwise this is rather difficult to do when you have something in between you can't see what it is but you see now the zipper is lying nicely underneath the fabric I folded this over and uh, iron it and pinned it down with the clip so that I'm sure this squeeze will stay like this and then we have to attach the other part of the zipper to the seam allowance that is here underneath and what I like to do is weigh this down with some weights that I'm sure that when I fold it over uh, it will not shift because this has to stay here and not going like there because then you have a problem so always use some weights that you're sure this will not change um, and then and because this is not a, a normal fabric it is rather difficult to fold it over nicely and carefully so I like to do it like this and then what you can do you can just take uh, up the seam allowance and put your pins in the zipper band and I already did a little bit so I will continue doing that going further down putting my pin in so you put the pin only into the um, zipper band 
and the seam allowance so not onto the fabric so going down and maybe it's better to go from the other way because otherwise you don't have enough weight on the seam allowance or on the uh, fold so for the other half I will go from the other side put my weight there and then folding it over that way and putting my pins in and then you have your zipper band nicely secured to your seam allowance and not to the outer fabric so that you don't get uh, stitching on the outer fabric and that's what you wanted because you didn't want now to have stitching here on the outside um, because now you have your seam here with your stitching so this is all pinned you flip over your fabric and you can sew this part and again flip it up and make sure that you put aside the outer part that you cannot accidentally sew that on so just sew it like this with your seam allowance so now you should have something like this as you see I have to cut off the rest of my zipper still um, and then what you do you only have to do the all the side seams and put your um, strips in between if you haven't done it already and it's very simple by just folding it over make sure that the edges are aligned and then so that aligned so and here is the other pillow it's a bit smaller than the blue one but now I see the down part of making this the zipper like this with not top stitching the, but the top part is that it won't stay flat can you see that it's flipped open and I can pull it down but then when I just put on the cushion it opens up you see so I think I will still top stitch this part now because I want it to stay down over the zipper otherwise it will there will get water into the zipper so this wasn't a success because I still have to top stitch it here and I have the seam here that I'm really not a fan of because this is the top part of the cushion so this will be upwards so there is a seam here on the top of the cushion and when it's raining it can go through this and then you really have to seal this because otherwise it will not stay uh, dry inside so this was as you saw uh, easier to make to sew because it um, you di didn't have to uh, sew with a full tunnel in which you have to pull the, the zipper into and uh, you can just lay this flat open so it's very uh, more easy to uh, attach the zipper but I don't like it like this because now I still have the top stitch and I have this seam that I didn't want so I will make the other ones like the blue one I like that very much it is nice the top stitch here is not really a problem because it's double fabric and also a zipper band underneath so before the water gets through it must get way way deep um, and uh, I like that I don't have a seam on top of the uh, cushion and I would like that way more I think it's more neat and it's more nice and it's more practical so I'm gonna make some more of these and I'll show you in the outer clip how they look uh, from a farther distance than this is and this is how it looks with a few pillows on the bench looks really nice the white and the blue ones and I'll show you in a close-up how that looks And I have a few more to make but it really looks already very nice and um, I must say I don't like the white one with that seam on top because that really will get wet so I think I will seal this from the inside with um, some wax or some tape or some glue so that the uh, seam is uh, sealed especially the one on top you can do that with all the seams that you have but uh, you don't have to it should be waterproof like this but this way I don't like but what I noticed when I make the third one um, what we did with the first um, we did the uh, side seams first and then the top stitching of the uh, zipper but because I was afraid that I couldn't um, get the side seams really nice and flat if I had done that before but with the third, the, the third one I did uh, first 
um, put the top stitching of the zipper and then do the side seams. And that was perfectly, perfectly okay, it was very good to do. And then it's easier to do the top stitching because otherwise you have to top stitch it through the open zipper and that is rather difficult. You cannot do the two diagonal lines in one. You must do one first and then the other when the zipper is attached. So it wasn't that easy to do. But when you first do the top stitching, then the side seams, it's very good to do, very quick to do. I did the last one I think in about five minutes or so. So then you can really quickly make a pillow. And this one is really nice, no seam on the top, so this is the top part that is laying on the back to the back, so water will get from here and there's no problem. The zipper is on the bottom, so that's better too, and it is covered, so this should be really nice waterproof when you leave them outside. Oops, it's always falling down! <laughs> so, I hope you like this tutorial, I hope you like them. Um, if you have any questions about this, as always, leave a comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can, usually the same day, and I can help you out. Uh, and next week we have, of course, a new fashion video as I normally have. Please subscribe if you like my videos and I'll see you again next Sunday. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!